How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates How We Get Around Let's start with a quick quiz to test your knowledge. Which of these contains the most energy? A. A gallon of gasoline B. A stick of dynamite C. A hand grenade The correct answer is A. Gasoline A single gallon of gas contains the same energy as 130 sticks of dynamite. That's why we use gas in our cars instead of explosives. Gasoline is also remarkably cheap in the United States. It's less expensive than bottled water, yogurt, and even Charles Shaw wine. Gallon for gallon, gasoline is the gold standard for energy per dollar spent. However, transportation is the biggest cause of emissions in the United States. To achieve zero emissions, we need to replace fossil fuels with something just as energy dense and cheap. It won't be easy, but it's possible. The Impact of Fossil Fuels on Transportation For the first 99.9% .9 of human history, we didn't rely on fossil fuels for transportation. But in the early 1800s, we discovered coal-powered locomotives and steamboats and never looked back. Transportation emissions will keep growing through at least 2050. It's aviation, trucking, and shipping that account for all the emissions growth in this sector. Developing countries are responsible for most of the growth in transport-related carbon. China's transportation emissions have doubled over the past decade and increased tenfold since 1990. Transportation is essential for personal freedom and survival. But how can we get all the benefits without making the climate unlivable? We need to figure out the green premiums for transportation. Let's explore where these emissions are coming from and what innovations we need. Reducing emissions from passenger cars. There are about a billion cars on the road, and we need an alternative to burning gasoline to reduce emissions. Electric vehicles have already been proven to work and are being sold by many manufacturers worldwide. Although EVs used to be more expensive, the cost of batteries has decreased by 87% since 2010. Various tax credits and government commitments have also made EVs more affordable. But what about the green premium? When you account for all the differences in total cost of ownership, the Bolt will cost 10 cents more per mile driven than the gas-powered Malibu. In some parts of Europe, gas prices are so high that the green premium for EVs has already reached zero. As battery prices continue to drop, I predict that the premium for most cars will be zero by 2030. Electric vehicles can be a solution to reducing emissions from passenger cars. As they become more affordable, we should get more EVs on the road. The Pros and Cons Electric vehicles are getting more affordable, and that's great news. But there are still some drawbacks to EVs versus gas-powered cars. One drawback is that EVs are cheaper only when gas prices are above $3 per gallon. When gas prices are low, EV batteries are simply too expensive. It takes an hour or more to fully charge an EV, while gas cars take less than 5 minutes. Plus, EVs only reduce carbon emissions if we're using zero-carbon electricity. If we want to have every passenger car in America running on electricity by 2050, EVs would need to be nearly 100% of auto sales within the next 15 years. Today they're less than 2%. Exploring alternative fuels Alternative liquid fuels can be another way to get to zero. Advanced biofuels made from non-food crops or farming residue have little or no fertilizer needs. Some advanced biofuels can be used in conventional engines without modification. Switching to alternative fuels is not a lost cause. Biofuels and electrofuels are promising alternatives to gasoline. But they face technical and economic challenges. 
I learned this firsthand when I invested $50 million in a biofuels company. Their proprietary process didn't work well enough to be economical. Electrofuels have a lot of advantages. They're made using carbon dioxide captured from the atmosphere, so burning them doesn't add to emissions. However, they're very expensive to produce. Hydrogen is needed, and it's costly to make without emitting carbon. The impact of EV on consumers. For the average family, doubling the price of gasoline means an extra $2,000 premium. Tripling it means an extra $4,000 for every conventional passenger car on the road in America. Batteries are a less practical option for long-distance buses and trucks. Electricity is viable for medium-duty vehicles and short routes. The city of Shenzhen, China, has electrified its entire fleet of more than 16,000 buses and nearly two-thirds of its taxis. I think the green premium for buses will reach zero within a decade. For heavier vehicles, more batteries are needed, adding a lot of weight. We need to explore other options for decarbonizing transportation. Why electrifying heavy-duty vehicles is not practical? We all want to reduce our carbon footprint, but electrifying our cargo trucks, ships, and planes is not a practical solution. Why? Because the best lithium-ion battery available today packs 35 times less energy than gasoline. According to a 2017 study by two mechanical engineers at Carnegie Mellon University, an electric cargo truck capable of going 600 miles on a single charge would need so many batteries that it would have to carry 25% less cargo. The same goes for ships and planes. The more power you need, the heavier your vehicle gets. Batteries will never be light and powerful enough to move planes and ships anything more than short distances. Our best bet is to replace jet fuel with electrofuels and advanced biofuels. But, they come with hefty premiums too. Making the switch to alternatives would do us a lot of good because shipping alone accounts for 3% of all emissions. Cutting down on transportation emissions. How can we move towards zero emissions from transportation? There are four ways to cut down on emissions. First, we can do less of it. Encouraging alternative modes like walking, biking, and carpooling can help reduce emissions. Second, we can use fewer carbon-intensive materials in making cars. Less steel and plastics in our cars means lower carbon footprints. Third, we can use fuels more efficiently. Although fuel efficiency standards for passenger cars and trucks have made a difference, they don't go far enough. Fourth, the most effective way to move towards zero emissions is switching to electric vehicles and alternative fuels. Both options currently carry a green premium, but we can work towards reducing it. 